The large reason why these animals seem to be persisting in high densities or a high abundance within the exclusion zone is because of the absence of humans. As you drive around the exclusion zone, you're overcome by uh, all the lush nature. It's really an eerie reminder of the tragic human impact that occurred there back around 30 years ago. The Chernobyl exclusion zone is basically a 30 kilometer radius that was created that extends around the nuclear reactor where the accident occurred. And within that 30 kilometer zone, that's where preventative measures were taken to exclude people. So all the towns, villages, cities within that area, that 30 kilometer area, were evacuated. Thirty years after the accident, this uh, wood lens increased up to one half or more times. So now approximately 70% of area under the forest. If we talk about large mammals like carnivores and ungulates, it's really good habitat because uh, it's a wild territory now and especially this uh, very wild spot uh, um, along the border with Belarus uh, and uh, also many different water sources uh, uh, like lakes and rivers and springs. So the work that we've been involved with in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone has been to look at the distribution and relative abundance of wildlife, particularly large mammals and, and especially carnivores, specifically looking at radiation contamination. So as you move from areas of, of low to high contamination, do you see a subsequent drop off in uh, the number of species that you detect, the, the relative abundance of those animals? species we most commonly documented were raccoon dogs, large numbers of photographs of, of gray wolves, red fox, Eurasian boar, Eurasian badger. When we have human dominated landscapes, we have lower densities of animals, especially animals that come into conflict with humans like wolves. And so after people were removed, even though the landscape was highly contaminated, it allowed them to increase. What this research is not looking at is the individual health of those animals. So it doesn't suggest that these animals are incredibly healthy, although on the surface they appear very healthy. It doesn't imply that there aren't more uh, subtle genetic effects, and that's an important area that I think we need to continue to explore with future research down the road.